Today we're talking about some not so awesome games from Beam Software, starting with Bad Street Brawler on NES. This game is hilariously bad. You can even tell by the title screen that this guy sucks. The timer is already counting down before you can even move. You also have to press up on the D-pad to jump, which always sucks. You start out kicking dogs in their faces until they're dead. And it's basically the same 1930s strongman circus enemy throughout the whole level. Enemies take an annoying amount of hits for what the game is, but at least they have a bar where you can watch their hit points go down. Even the guy from SLC Punk makes an appearance and wants to bludgeon you to death with a bag of nickels. But that's nothing compared to the giant gorilla you fight next. He even throws bananas at you. What's the deal with this weirdo kicking dogs and fighting monkeys out in public anyway? You do collect items, but it is super hard to make out what they're supposed to be. I totally thought that this was a bat with a slinky attached to it. After tossing all of your items into the garbage for some reason, the move they teach you in the beginning of the second stage honestly just looks like you're feeling someone up. What the hell is happening? Next up, we have some licensed NES goodness with Days of Thunder. Based on the 1990 Tom Cruise movie of the same name, Days of Thunder is about racing cars. And it's the most boring racing game I've ever played. At least the intro screen is kind of cute. I guess the beginning is some kind of practice stage where you have to finish the lap within 24 seconds. What's funny is if you take your hands off the controller, the car keeps going and doesn't really bump into anything. It's slow, but it keeps going. I thought this would only happen on the practice stage, but it lets you do this in the race too. Just keep going until you run out of fuel. Talk about a slow and painful death. The first race is 12 laps long. How are you supposed to get ahead of the other cars when the acceleration sucks? I was bored out of my mind by lap two. And lastly, there's Itchy and Scratchy in Miniature Golf Madness for Game Boy. This isn't a traditional golf game like you'd expect. It's more of a side-scroller where you have to bring the ball with you. The idea is basically to get the ball to the end of each level. They give you nine lives, which is good because killing Itchy can be hard to do. When he appears on the screen, you don't get much time to react at all. The putter is your default weapon, but you can also get other weapons on the course. Good luck hitting Itchy with any of them, though. I am able to sometimes, but most of the time, the hit detection doesn't work too well and you die. What also really makes this game a drag is having to slow down and bring the ball with you. In most platformers, you want to get through the stage fast. Well, this is the opposite. It's almost like having to do an escort mission, but for the entire game. The worst is when you're trying to get the ball on a platform, and you do it, but it won't let you putt from the appropriate side, so you're kind of just stuck there. Of all the things you could do with Itchy and Scratchy for a game, is this the best they could come up with? Do you agree with these choices being labeled as bad games? Let me know in the comments, and thank you so much for watching. Bye!